Hello and welcome to another Solana tutorial. Today we're gonna keep it short. I just quickly want to tell you something that I learned and make a video about it. Yeah, let's do that. Because if I make videos that are, you know, that long and take forever to edit, then I don't make as many. So today we're just gonna make a short, quick one. And we talk about how NFTs are represented in Solana, because I came across this article, which is written pretty neatly three days ago. It felt like it was like a week ago that I read that, but anyhow. And, and, and yeah, I, I can only recommend this article and I will link it down below if you want to read it yourself. So it, it starts with a lot of background and it wants to make it quite obvious how how the real world translates to how we do it with tokens on Solana. But with the tokens, there's nothing really new for me here that every wallet needs to have token accounts to hold tokens. Uh, that That's nothing new to me. So that the ATA is a program derived account from the token program. That is also nothing new to me that you can also have other token accounts that you create Otherwise, it's also nothing new to me. Uh, so, so this is, you know, this setup I know because I've spent quite some time researching the token program. But what is new to me or what, where it got interesting for me is when they started talking about the metadata program. So there we go. Now we also have uh, metadata accounts. They are handled by the token metadata program. That's something I don't know that much about, but I knew that they existed, right? So every mint, if it's an NFT, will have this metadata account as well. And that is handled by the token metadata program. So with metadata, the PID, and just via the mint, you can derive this account, this address. So far, so good. And all those things that are in here with the mint and the name and the symbol, that that I also knew because I updated those things and, uh, you know, I, I know how that works. So I knew that there is this thing here, right? And then that the picture is behind that URI, which points somewhere off chain, which then has a link to the image of chain. That's also nothing new to me. That's the R weave part, right? Usually, usually an R weave for Solana NFTs. It goes more into detail. Now here it got a little bit interesting because I didn't know all the caveats about the master edition or end edition accounts. But the one thing that was really new to me and where I had like a ah moment was when I read this. So that an NFT has zero decimals, that I knew, that there needs to be exactly one token minted. That makes sense because NFT just one have revoked its right to mint additional tokens with the mint authority attribute. And that also makes perfect sense because you should not be able to mint more of that token if there should only ever be one. But what my head was still struggling with is that the mint authority never gets deactivated on NFTs. And we're gonna get there in a second, but let me first demonstrate that. For example, let's look at any of the NFTs in my wallet that you guys sent me. If you want to send me NFTs, send them to solandi.sol. <laughs> this video is brought to you by solandi.sol. So let's see, any any of the NFTs in here? Koalana. This one also looks new. <laughs> and a lot of scam tokens. I love it. Yes, please, people, send me all of your scam tokens. Just send them to me. Just send them to me. I, 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 I like to have them in my wallet because then you don't need to. Oh, a bike, I think that's new. I also think this is new. And this is definitely new. Swimming yo. Woof Solana, this one is definitely new. Yeah, so let's go with this Woof Solana. The Woofers. <laughs> let's go with this Woofer. If we have a look at its token, we see that it has a mint authority. It's owned by the token program and it still has a mint authority, which doesn't make sense to me. Like it has a supply of one. Okay, fine. Fine. That's good. It has zero decimals. Let's, let's look at it on the Explorer as well. So 
Max total supply, one. Current supply, one. So far, so good. Okay, so it also doesn't display the decimals anymore because it already displays it as a Metaplex NFT. The explorers get smarter. But yet, it has a mint authority. It has a goddamn mint authority. Why would you keep a mint authority if it's supposed to be an NFT with a max supply of one? That was still, like, I still didn't get that. I still didn't get why you don't just disable it. Like I did for my loop token. My loop token has nine decimals and I disabled the mint authority, which means it has a fixed supply. With that woofers thing, it doesn't say fixed supply. It says current supply and max total supply. Because the mint authority wasn't disabled. And I was like, why don't you just disable it for NFTs? And this article, coming back here, gave me the answer. Check this out. The token metadata program uses this edition PDA to guarantee those properties. So it's the token metadata program that guarantees that a token must have zero decimals and there must be only one of them minted. Only then will it allow a metadata account to be created. Sorry, a master edition account or an edition account to be created. Because this can also be, a metadata account can also be created for semi-fungible tokens or for tokens. <laughs> Like those shit coins, <laughs> all those scam coins that people sent me. Yeah, they are not NFTs because uh, they uh, have uh, have more than, even though it says NFTs, they're not because they have more than one, but they have a metadata account. So they, you can display that. If you look at that, this is the authority for it. And that's a normal authority that can create more shit with it. Come back here. The token metadata program will only allow one of those to be created if those properties are met. So, well, actually just those two. It will check that itself. Otherwise it will refuse to create the account. And if it succeeds, here it gets interesting, then the mint authority is transferred to this new edition PDA. So the mint authority is transferred to these accounts, which means that if there is a master edition or an edition account, it also means that we're dealing with an NFT because all of those criteria are met. Those two are checked by the program and this one, it essentially makes sure itself because itself will never mint again. It just holds the mint authority. At least that's the way I understand this. And that I find quite cool actually. And then it goes into more detail why we want that master edition and edition accounts and also into semi fungible tokens and the standard that is here can be non fungible and we're dealing with an NFT and that guarantees us the following. And we can't just simply set that the token program, uh, the token metadata program needs to set the token standard. So if the token metadata program set the token standard, then we know that it is true that we have zero decimals, we have only one minted and the mint authority has been transferred there and there exists an account for the master edition or the edition. That's quite a clean, solution actually and that's a nice diagram to represent all the elements that are required for an nft on solana all the accounts and off-chain stuff and i find this to be quite a nice setup but one question remains though why do i not just disable the mint authority but i transfer it here if those accounts basically promise me to never mint another token anyway. Why don't I just disable it? And I think one reason for that might be that I then have a nice reference in the mint account. So in the 
token mint account owned by the token program in the first entry here I have a reference directly pointing to the addition account aka here the mint authority this thing boom points to the addition account why would that ever be relevant I don't know this mint authority points to the addition account owned by the token metadata program why is that relevant it gives you a quicker way to access that account like I also like this diagram where he wrote the offsets and the sizes of all the data in the in the account if I wanted to find out what kind of edition I have if that's a master edition or a normal edition then I can just via the mint authority go here directly of course I could also just derive that because I just need to know metadata then the token metadata program ID mint and edition and then I will also find that account same way I need to do it to get to the metadata account with the metadata metadata program ID plus the mint I can find that but having the direct reference right why not why deleting what's in there if you can just set it to one account that holds more information personally I would have loved and in the when when reading this first I thought this would actually be set to the metadata account which I would have loved even more because then in here you would have the metadata account but no it's it's linking to the edition not to the metadata account because the metadata account that's 3a 3a that's, that's the master edition or it, that's the edition account and I'm assuming yeah and this is the metadata account the 4pf which is also owned by the metadata uh, token metadata program and that in its data holds all the metadata so yeah I would have kind of liked if that mint authority would link there because I need the metadata account way more often than I need the edition accounts but it's still kind of a nice setup to have them here and I'm not sure if the if you create like editions if that would mint this the more no because then it wouldn't be an nft anymore it would still mint new nfts right create new tokens with the token program like i still don't fully understand this maybe the mint authority actually needs to be held here and if you create additions then you mint more but no that doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense you can't because then you would create another master edition as well because you can't distinguish which token is now master and which one is the edition still not getting this a hundred percent but that's why we're in this space to learn to keep reading nice documents like this and keep learning so thank you loris for writing that up and uh, teaching us some stuff about tokens actually now i'm curious because he wrote that there's a maximum of nine decimals and I was like no there is not and I linked him a token with 255 decimals which is highly unusable but uh, possible so I think he just removed this he just removed the thing with nine decimals right yeah the nine is is gone from the article <laughs> yep you're welcome I taught you something you taught me something that's how this works I also really like the diagrams this one especially if you if you have those numbers and those numbers and those numbers then you don't need to always go into the source code and look it up what the offset for the individual things are which is really helpful if you're developing on Solana so yeah I like this I like this I like this thank you for creating this graphic I'm gonna make that my new desktop background <laughs> or something probably not but I, I still like it Anyway, it's a good time to finish. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know if you like those kind of shorter videos that I could potentially hopefully make more of. Lol. We'll see. <laughs> uh, leave it a like if you enjoyed it, if you learned something. Read the entire article. I can only recommend that. 
And if you have any more questions, join my Discord and uh, we can discuss there or not. And uh, yeah, yeah, I hope that you learned something today and I hope that you enjoy your Solana development journey or whichever journey you're on. And uh, yeah, thank you for joining my journey in this crypto space, heavily focusing on Solana now. Uh, check out those videos and uh, I shall see you in the next one.